What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about the Vast E1. This is a class 3 electric bike. It is also a full suspension bike, but you wouldn't be able to tell because of the proprietary rear suspension system that they use. Let's dive into the specs and show you what this bike is all about. The Vast E1 is a class 3 pedal assist bike with pedal assist up to 28 miles per hour. It has a Bosch PowerTube 500 watt hour battery that powers the Bosch Gen 4 performance line speed mid-drive motor. The battery is also integrated internally into the seat post. This is all controlled with the Bosch Kiox control unit that also has Bluetooth connectivity. The controller is removable and when removed it essentially locks the bike so you can't turn it on. The Vast E1 is a full suspension bike. The frame is a monoframe built hydroformed aluminum with a unique layout of internal components including the nailed React rear suspension system. The front suspension fork is a Suntour Duro Lux 36 with 110mm of travel. The E1 features Enviolo ST internal gear hub with a Gates carbon belt drive. This internal hub leaves infinite gear ratios with a twist of the grip shifter. The brakes are Shimano hydraulic four piston disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. The wheels are 27.5 inch wheels with Schwalbe Supermoto X 62584 reflex tires. Integrated on the bike are a front and a rear rack for versatility in carrying cargo. And the bike also has integrated front and rear supernova lights. The Vast E1 with Enviolo weighs 80 pounds and comes with a price tag of $8,499. Let's take you on a ride for a little on-bike experience and to show you what it's like riding this thing. Right now, on a flat road, I am in pedal is zero, as in the bike is off. And this is a heavier bike, so it's definitely some work even on a flat surface. It does have this grip shifter over here on the right. And you can use that to go from the easiest to the hardest gear pretty quick. And everything in between, since there are really no limits to which gear you can be in. It's kind of got an infinite amount of gears, which is awesome. But in zero, a little harder to get going just because the spike does come in weighing 80 pounds. From a full stop, in a pretty low gear. It takes some work to get it moving, but you can do it if you really ran out of battery and you had to. But electric bike, we want that pedal assist. And I turned it just into eco for right now, since we're still on the flat and you feel that assist right away. You can hear the motor going and it's definitely a lot easier already just in eco mode. You can see from my view, I can see how fast I'm going on the computer right there, which is 13 miles an hour. Go to a stop and right when you get going, you can feel that boost in eco. This does have that torque sensor, so you have to be putting down some power to get the bike going. That's good though, because the more power you push, the more assist you're gonna get. It feels a bit more natural than if you have a hub drive motor with just a cadence sensor, because that kind of just goes. This one, I'm still an eco, just soft pedaling. You can hear the motors doing something, but not much. But when you really put down some power, shift that a little bit, you see the assist that you're getting here on this cool little graph that is on this Bosch kiosk computer. From Eco to Tour on the flats, you feel that assist come in more. It's already brought me from just this soft pedal that I've been doing from 13 to 17 miles an hour, which is pretty great. Just cruising around town on the flats. It's also nice because this computer, scroll through, gives you a lot of information from real time range to your trip distance how much you've been riding for the day. There's a lot, how much power you're putting out, your cadence. There is a, there's a lot of information on this computer. I like keeping it here where you can see your speed and how much output the motor is putting. But yeah, just soft pedaling. You can easily get to 17 miles an hour in tour mode. 
from a stop. It's going nice and easy. It's hard to see on here, but you see that graph moving up and down depending on how much power you're putting down. And that's pretty sweet. I'll put this into sport mode, keeping the same cadence, pretty mellow cadence, but I can feel my legs just getting a lot of relief from that. And we're still hitting 17 miles an hour right now, which is super solid. Very slight uphill. Just put it up into sport mode just to see how we can get going. And we're cruising at 18 and a half and it really feels like I'm not putting any effort in. I can scroll screens over to see what my power is only at, depending on the little gradient, but under 100 watts right now. My cadence is hovering mid 70s, which is not hard to do right now. It's still a very conversational pace, but going this fast feels good. I'll put it into turbo and then you feel that kick in very quickly didn't change my pedaling or my gears much but you can feel the motor kick in more and my cadence has definitely gone up but i'm going over 20 miles per hour with ease to get faster i got to put more power down and i've got to shift so i shifted down into a harder gear and the more power i put down the faster I'm able to go. We've got our red light here, so I'm gonna test out these four piston disc brakes we got. Hey, and that was a smooth stop from coming over 20 miles per hour. This does have that step through design, so it's nice, you don't have to worry about putting your feet down when you get to a light. Also, the Enviolo internally geared hub is nice because you can change to your easiest gear from a stop. Not like with a cassette where you have to worry about getting your chain in the right position and shifting. I was in the harder gear, in a harder gear when I stopped, so I have now pushed it to an easier one so that when I get going from a stop, I won't have an issue pedaling. And we're in turbo, so that should get us going pretty quick. But yeah, I changed my gear from the stop to an easy one to get me going. And that pushes you going quick. I'm already back up to 20 miles an hour with minimal effort. Which is pretty great for a bike that weighs 80 pounds. I think it's really nice having this internally geared hub with kind of the infinite shifting with such a heavy bike because you kind of want to be be making sure that you're in the right gear to pedal for all the circumstances to get the most efficiency out of yourself and the motor. And I just went up that hill very quick in turbo. And it's does it with ease. This like the shifting is great just to have that infinite amount of spots you can put it in while you're shifting. So if you really want to put the power down, crank your throttle harder and you will get in a harder gear. You're gonna be working harder, but so will the motor. Came over to the little hill that I like to test the bikes up. Not too steep, but also not too flat. And it's picking up gradient. I am not in any pedal assist right now in the easiest gearing, and this is hard. I don't wanna do that. So I go to Eco and that helps me a lot. I was going like four miles an hour. Now I'm going on six, you know, still putting in some work and it's not going fast. So let's go into tour mode. Tour mode picks up some speed, getting closer to 10. Got to shift my internally geared hub a little harder so I'm not spinning out my legs. You know, going 10 is cool. And turbo, tour mode is a lot, a lot more helpful than eco mode going up this hill. So I'm uh, guessing sport mode is really going to push us up there. Yeah, sport, 14 miles an hour. Had to shift 
kicked into a little harder gear because my legs were spinning out. But it's still easy to go up this fairly steep hill. For a bike this heavy, and if you had a load on it, this motor does a great job of getting you going. And turbo mode. That you can hear the motor kick in. Going 15, almost 16. You do hear the motor, but this belt-driven drivetrain is quiet. And that got us up quick. Now we get to go on this little downhill. It is a fairly bumpy downhill as well. And another awesome thing about this bike is that it is full suspension. So all these bumps, they really get dampened by that, that front shock and the rear shock. We're about to hit one right now. You don't feel it as much as you would on a rigid bike. And we're going 30 on that little hill, getting a chance to test out our hydraulic disc brakes again. Stop this bike with ease. We still got to go uphill, so I can go downhill to do the speed test. And what is so good about this mailed system, they really worked on it so you don't lose efficiency with that rear suspension when you're pedaling. That is something, if you've ridden full suspension mountain bikes, you put the power down, you feel that back end is all squishy. But this one really only comes into play from what I've noticed. If you're really hammering it, you feel it, but in a soft pedal, it's not that bad. When you hit bumps, that's when you feel that rear suspension do that action for you. And it's just great to have, because for a heavy bike, you don't want to be bouncing around so that rear suspension absorbs some of that shock so you can stay nice and stable. We've got to the gate of our downhill challenge. What I like to call this hill is the downhill challenge. To see how this bike handles at speed and what speed it can get to. It is rated up to 28 miles per hour with the pedal assist, but I know this thing can go faster than that, especially with the weight going downhill. So I just turn the motor off and let gravity take me. And it feels stable at 32 miles an hour. And we're picking up. Yeah, we're moving. It's over 35. It still feels stable. You feel it grabbing those, hitting those bumps, but it works out with the suspension. And we'll use those four piston brakes to get us to a stop and safely slow down so we can go around this gate. And that was fast, that was 35 miles an hour. It's pretty solid. The Vast E1 with Enviolo is a very premium bike packed with a ton of features. The unique monoframe with front and rear suspension give this bike a comfortable ride and it soaks up the bumps in the road with ease. The nailed rear suspension is awesome tech and it works great. You don't feel the loss of efficiency with the suspension, it just benefits your comfort. The oversized front rack was able to hold our larger bags and the bike handled well with the weight up there. The rear rack would be awesome to add a basket on there so you can add your groceries in there. You can also hold some panniers and that would make this much more versatile. Being able to take the computer off the stem is just an awesome feature. You can take that off really easily. It is just magnetically attached. You can put that in your pocket when you walk in somewhere or park it. That way you get a little more ease of mind as no one can turn this bike on and ride it. It also has tons of information to help give you real-time range and can be used for turn-by-turn -turn directions. The bike gets you up to speed really quick in turbo mode. The Bosch Performance Line speed motor does a great job of getting over 25 miles per hour with ease. The Enviolo internally geared rear hub with the Gates carbon belt drive is really smooth and quiet. It's super nice to be able to change gears when you are at a stop. That way you can prepare to get going without having to downshift before you get to a stop. There weren't really many downsides that we experienced with the Vast E1. This is a heavier bike coming in at 80 pounds, but that does give you a front and a rear rack included on there, and it is also a full suspension bike. This bike is pretty heavy, so bringing it upstairs may be a little difficult, so hopefully you have a nice garage to park this in. Just by habit with all of my bikes, I do tend to move the bike around with the seat, 
This does have a quick adjustment on the seat post and there is a sign that says, do not lift bicycle from the saddle. Just took me a long time to get used to that. Every time I would try to lift it from the saddle, it would change the seat height and make that crazy loud noise. That's just one of those small things that took a little bit of getting used to on my end. The price point of this bike is high at $8,499. That is gonna bring some sticker shock to some people and we get that. It is a very expensive bike and not really in the price point for a lot of e-bike riders. The Vast E1 is definitely a premium bike and you can say that is equivalent to a luxury car versus a standard car. If you are someone looking for a premium bike with awesome technology, this could be the bike for you. The Vast E1 comes with very awesome parts and awesome technology. Having those sturdy integrated racks and those lights make this bike ready for your commute or any errands that you need to do. We think this bike could be a car replacement for someone if you are fully committed to riding a bike and you don't want to drive anymore. Thanks for watching this video and let us know what you think about the Vast E1 and Violo in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we got a lot more videos just like this.